heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one in Christ Jesus our Lord. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Let us review the uh, Coptic that we have uh, learned um, over the past uh, few weeks. And we will learn a few uh, letters today. Um, these three letters, they look like English, but they're pronounced a little bit differently. So first, let's review what we learned. We learned alpha, which is pronounced A. We learned vita, which is pronounced V most of the time, and in some time, uh, sometimes it's a B. E, which is pronounced E. Zeta, which is pronounced Z. Yota, which is pronounced I. Kappa, which is pronounced K. Me, M, Ne, N. O, which is like a short O. Sima which is always a C or an S sound, never a K sound. Tav, which is T. And U, which is a long O, like an OA sound. So these are the letters that we learned so far. Today, we'll learn three new letters. So the first letter, it's called Eta. It's called Eta. It looks like an H, but it's pronounced like a long E, like two E's. Or like two eyes, like one way you can remember it, you can imagine that these are two eyes with a dash in between them. So eta is like a long E or like two eyes. Like, like for example, like feet, like that kind of long E. So as an example here, we have this word. This word is actually just two vowels. It's the eta, which is the long E, and the yota, which we already learned, which is like an I or a Y. So how do we pr pronounce this? This is E, E, like, like three E's together. And the word E, it means house. Like we say, for example, share uh, hail to the church, ip E and teni angelos, the house of the angels. So E is house, okay? And you, you write it just like you write an H. The next letter is Rho. And pay attention because most people, they get confused with this letter. Why? Because it looks like a P, but it's pronounced as an R. Okay, Rho looks like a P, but it's pronounced like an R, R like, the, like in the word Rho, the R. So we have an example here. We have Rho and Yota. So this is Re, Re, which means cell or room, Re. Okay, so Rho looks like a P, but it's pronounced like an R. And then we have this letter called key. It looks like an X, okay? It's called what? Key. Most of the time, it's pronounced like a K. Like this example here, we have key me, key me. This is a K, this is the eta, the two E's, key. And then this is the me, and then the yota, key me. Key me, which is the word for Egypt, key me. In some Greek words, key is pronounced like an SH, like sh, sh. Like this word, we're familiar with it, shere, like we say shere ne mare, right? Shere, so here the, the, the key is pronounced like an SH. And sometimes it's, the, the key is pronounced like a kh, the kh. You, you know the kh sound, we have that in Arabic, right? Like you say mulukheya, right? Kh, or khiar. So in this example here, we have Christos, Christos. Here the key is uh, a kh, and then this is the, re, uh, the, the row that we learned. This is the eta that we learned. And then these letters we already took, the sima, which is an S, tav, which is a T, O, and then sima again, Christos, Christos, which is what Christ, like we say Christos and Esti. Right, Christ is risen. Okay, 
So now let's read some words. So please raise your hand to volunteer to read some words. So here's the first word, very easy. I see Noah, you have your hand up. Noah, can you say the first word here? Keek. Keek, very good. Keek, Keek which I is cake. Okay, it's ki and then ita ita or or the sorry the ita which is like ee -E, and then k which is key. Very good, Noah. Um, I have my brother with me. Can he read one? Sure, uh, Chris, Christopher. Can yes. you read this word? I know it's a little bit big, but we broke it down. Can you try? Za. Za. That's good. And this is the key that we learned today, which is. Uh, like a K. Um, ta. Um, za, ka. And then this is the row, which is an R. Uriah. Excellent. Zachariah. Very good. Zachariah, which is Zachariah, right? All right. Who's next? Uh, we have somebody called Texas Tom. Texas Tom, do you want to read the next one? Yeah. Um, the, the, and then the, the seam. Seam. The seam. Good, versim. Versim, which is in Arabic, it's called versim, which is like the, uh, the, the hay or the clover that the, that the cows usually eat, Versim. Good job. Okay, Gloria, you want to do the next one? Sara. Good. Sara, which is Sarah. So here we have, again, this is the row, which is R. Is Philo with you? Yes. Philo, yes. do you want to do the next one? Sir. Excellent. Seer. Seer, which in Arabic is zir. It's this clay pot that, um, <clears throat> you know, back before refrigerators and stuff like that, they would put water in these clay pots and they leave it outside. And it stays cold because um, it's like an insulator. So they call it a zir or seer. Okay. Um, Gabby, want to do the next one? Yeah. Sure. Uh, Anthony. Anthony. Anton. Anton. And then the last part. I. Uh. I O S. I. I know his when you stung your tongue out, Dad. Me. Oh, I know. And then you started being a whole lot meaner. Say, uh, it. Say it again. Uh, Anton. Os. Yos. 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 Antonius. Antonius. You know, Saint Antonius, Saint Anthony, right? Okay. Good job. All right. So let's read some more words. So I I want to see more volunteers. Let's see. Somebody else who hasn't said yet. Who wants to try? Helena? Amin. Amin, very good. That's an easy one. Amin. Okay. Heidi, the next one. Key votos. Good. Key votos. The Ark, the Ark of Covenant. This Ark of Covenant is called the Key votos. Be Key votos. Okay. Um, Adrian, do you want to do the next one? Zoir. Zoe, 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 which means life. Good. Okay. Uh, Anthony Gerges, you want to do the next one? Um, the fourth one here. Z. Zo. Zoni. Zoni, yes, good. Zoni, Zoni, which means belt. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Gabby Gerges, do you want to do the next one? 
Yeah. Um. Ru, Rui. Ro me. This is the me, the M. Ro me, Ro me, which is a uh, man. Good job, Ro me. Okay, let's see who else. Um, Maria, want to do the next one? Uh, Ro. Ro, good. Ro, Ro, which means door. Good. Uh, Mimi, you want to do the next one? Uh, khaki. Khaki, good. Sounds like a, a bad word, but khaki means darkness. Khaki. Okay. Or the uh, yes. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Mina, you want to do the next one? Yeah. So in this in, in this case, the, the 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 key here is pronounced an sh, like sh. Okay. So 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 in that so in that case, it would be it would be uh, it would be a zone, correct? Sheyon, Sheyon, because you have a yota here. Yes, Sheyon, which means no. We we say this in the in the midnight praises. Piri nempi Sheyon, right? The snow, hail and snow, Sheyon. Good. I have a All question. Right. Yes. So when are when do we know uh, when we say it um, in a S H or a K? Yes, that's that's a good question. So um, most of the time it's going to be a K. When do we know it's 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 an S H or a, or a H? Typically, if it's a Greek word, so if it's a word that's borrowed from the Greek language, um, then it will be Sh or H. And how do we know the difference, Bardo? There, there are some rules, but I, I don't want to confuse you with too many rules at this point. Um, but as you, as you learn more uh, vocabulary and more words, you'll begin to recognize you know, how to pronounce the words. Um, but I don't want to give you too much rules uh, at the beginning because it can be a little overwhelming, okay? All right. The last word, let's see somebody who hasn't said anything. Mira, do you want to try? And in this case, the key here is a kha. Okay, Mira did not answer. Nadia, do you want to try? Uh, chorus. Chorus, good, chorus. Chorus, which is the chorus or the choir. Like we have the choir of deacon, we say the chorus. Good. Thank you. So just to review the letters that we learned today, we learned ETA, which is looks like an H, or again, an easy way to remember, it's like two eyes with a dash. So you pronounce it as like a long E or like two eyes. That's ETA. Rho, which looks like a P, but it's pronounced as an R, Rho. And then Ki, which looks like an X, and it's pronounced K, most of the time, and then in some Greek words, it could be sha or cha, sha or cha. Okay, so the word that we are going to learn today for, for the week is called ship. Eh, mot. We didn't take this letter yet, we'll take it, I think, either next time or the time after that. This is the sha, shy, s h, ship, and then this is p, ship, eh, mot, and this is h. Shepehmut, shepehmut, which means thank you. So when, when you want to say uh, thank you to somebody in Coptic, you can say what? Shepehmut. Good? Very good. Okay. So let's, um, let's look at the rights now. So um, just to review, so we learned about uh, that, that we start the raising of incense with the Lord's Prayer, and then we have the Thanksgiving Prayer. Um, and then we talked about the litanies. Um, and today we're going to talk about the next prayer, which is the prayer of mercy, if noti nainan. Before we do that, let's review the litanies because we spent quite a bit of time 
on that last time. And we said, you know, on different days, we pray different things. So I want somebody to remind me. Let me get that table that we have here. Okay. So in the evening incense, in Vespers, what litany do we pray? Who remembers? In the evening incense, which litany do we pray? The departed. Good, Mina. We always pray the departed on, on every day, whether it's a weekday or a feast day or a Sunday. We always pray the litany of the departed. Good. Now, what about in the morning? In the morning. What, let's, let's take the easy one first. In the morning on Saturdays, which litany do we pray? Travelers? No, on Saturday is a special day. And we pray one litany only in the, in the morning on Saturdays. And once I tell you, you'll remember why. But I want to see if somebody remembers. The sick? Yeah. Not no. the sick. I mean, the what? Oblations. Oblations, no. not on Saturdays. Departed. The departed. Who said the departed? Helena. Good job, Helena. We pray the the um, departed on Saturdays, and I, I'll I'll remind you why, because it's the only day that we remember that the Lord was in the tomb. Remember, I, I said this last time. And because on Saturday, the Lord was in the tomb, so we pray for the departed. Okay, so on Sundays and on feast days, which two litanies do we pray? On Sundays and on feast days, which two litanies do we pray? The sick and the travelers. The sick is correct. The sick and the oblations. The Good. sick and the oblations. Good. The sick and the oblations, we pray that on Sunday. Be because we said that the obla people usually, you know, they come to church on Sunday and they bring their oblations or they bring their offerings. And so the church prays for, um, you know, for those people that God may reward them for the offerings that they are bringing to the church. Saturdays, we said we pray for the departed. What about the weekdays? Which two litanies? And I'll give you a hint. It's, it's for the two groups that cannot come to church on the weekdays. So which two litanies do we pray? <laughs> the travelers and the sick. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, the travelers and the sick. Okay. So again, just to review, in the evening, we always pray the departed. In the morning, on Saturdays, we also pray the departed. On Sundays, we pray for the sick and the oblations, and on weekdays, we pray for the sick and the travelers. Okay, good. Um, so after the litanies, um, the priest goes inside the sanctuary and he puts a spoon of incense in the censer and he starts the procession throughout the church. We talked about this last time. This is just a review. And we said that Abuna offers the incense first before the sanctuary and then before the gospels and then before the relics of the saints. And then if the bishop is present, and if there are other priests present, and then he goes around um, offering incense before the icons of the saints. And we also talked about that the procession is always counterclockwise, always against you know, the clock. Why? Because in the church, we are against the world. Everything that we do in the church is against what the world usually does. So we, we go counterclockwise, and we talked about Abuna goes in this, in this uh, circuit like this from, um, from the left to the right. And then he goes back inside the altar and he does one circuit around the altar. And we also said why Abuna does this uh, uh, raising of incense, the circuit of incense, um, just like it, when it happened that the people sinned and the Lord um, punished them by a plague when they cried out to the Lord to have mercy on them. So he told Aaron to go out and walk among the people with the censer and offer incense. And when he did that, then um, he made atonement for the people and the Lord's punishment was lifted. Okay. 
We also talked about this last time. Remember, we, we said when you, you see it when Abuna goes up to the to the gospel, okay, and like let, let's imagine that this is uh, the gospel. So he puts his hand like this, and then he puts his hand like this, and then he puts his hand like this again, right? One, two, three, like that. And we said that this represents that we honor the gospel from within. That's the palm, the inside. So that represents the heart. And then we honor the gospel, the word of God from without. That means with our body. That's why we kiss the gospel. That's why we worship before the, the gospel. And then even so with, within, and that is the soul. So from our heart, our body, and our soul. So we honor the word of God you know, with our, our entire being. Um, and we talked also about that the incense before the relics and the icons of the saint is to denote our belief that they are present and attending with us. We talked also about the doxologies and we said that um, there's a um, like uh, an order of the doxologies, okay? Um, and that during the procession of the incense, everybody should be standing because the incense represents the presence of God among his people. So if God is among us, then we should stand. Okay, so then after Abuna finishes this procession and, and we finish chanting the, um, we finish chanting the, uh, the, the doxologies, there's one thing I, I didn't cover here. Um, so the order of the doxologies, we said that first we, we chant for the feast, um, then Saint Mary, then the archangels, then John the Baptist and the apostles, and then the martyrs, the confessors, and then um, the, the saints, the, like the monks and, uh, and nuns and stuff like that. After we finish the doxologies, so here's, we, here's when we chant the doxologies, then we recite the introduction to the creed and then the creed. What is the introduction to the creed? What does it start with? And we exalt you. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. Good. And then what is the creed? What does it start with? And we believe in one God. Good. We believe in one God. So what is the creed? In, 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 one, in one word or one, you know, one phrase, what can we say the creed is? What, what's the creed? It is it's our, our faith. It's, uh, it's our, our, faith. our faith. Very good. It's our faith. Who put who put the creed together? Does anybody know? Who put the creed yeah, together? I know. I know. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the the so the um what's it called? The the council. The, the council. council. Yes. Yeah. The council of Nice Nicaea and the council of uh, Constantinople. Good, good. So, and who wrote most of the creed? Saint, it begins with an A. Saint Athanasius. Saint Athanasius. We were actually celebrating uh, the feast of Saint Athanasius on, on Sunday. It's, it's not the feast of his departure, but it's the feast of um, the miracle that uh, happened with him when he was exiled and the king wanted to basically kill him. So he put him in a boat. If you were paying attention on Sunday for the, uh, during the reading of the Synexarium, the emperor put him in a boat without food, without water, without a guide. And he basically, he wanted to kill him, but he didn't want like, you know, bloodshed on his hands. So he's like, I'm gonna leave him in the, in the ocean and then he's gonna die in the ocean. And what happened was that God guided the, um, the boat to reach Alexandria, which is very far from Constantinople, uh, before he ran out of water or food or anything. And of course, this was a big miracle. And they, uh, they celebrated that, you know, that God, um, you know, uh, took care of, of um, Pope Athanasius. So the creed was put together. Most of it, or the majority of it, was put together by St. Athanasius and the first council, the Council of Nicaea. Um, and it was in response to heresies. What are heresies? Heresies are teaching, teachings that are against the, the, the orthodox teachings, like incorrect teachings. So in, in the Council of Nicaea, there was a man, his name was Arius, and he came and he said, 
you know what? I don't think that Jesus really is the son of God. He's not really God. Uh, we can call him something else or whatever, right? Um, so that's a heresy. So in order to respond to that heresy, St. Athanasius wrote the creed, which explains our faith. And it begins from, we believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator. There's like a couple of sentences about our faith in God the Father. And then there's a lot of, like a, the, the big chunk of it is speaking about our faith in God the Son. And then he ended it with, yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit. And that was the end of the creed. Then in the second council, the council of Constantinople, um, the, the heresies there was against the, the Holy Spirit. So they continued the creed from, yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit all the way until a, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. In the third council, the Council of Ephesus, so, there, so our Coptic Orthodox Church, we recognize three councils. An ecumenical council means a council of the whole economy, of the whole world. So all of the bishops of the world at that time, they would gather together, they would have a big meeting, and then they would discuss uh, the problem, the heresy, and then they would come to a conclusion. So in the third ecumenical council, the Council of Ephesus, Pope Cyril I, the pillar of faith, he wrote the introduction to the creed, which is we exalt you, the mother of the true light, because in that um, council, the problem was ag against um, the Theotokos being the mother of God, um, because uh, the, 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 heret the heretic was, was basically dividing the divinity from the humanity. And he's saying when Jesus was born, he was man. And later on, he, he, he got the Godhead. And so he, you know, that was the heresy. We can we can have uh, you know, a whole session about the councils, and I think it would be interesting for us to kind of learn the history of it, but I'm just giving you like a, a quick um, overview of how we got the creed and the introduction to the creed. Because- I have a question. This, one second. Um, because this is our faith. So that's why we pray the creed in the Agbeya. That's why we pray the creed several times during the liturgy, during the raising of incense, because upon this creed, this is how we are offering our worship to God. Yes, somebody had a question? Yeah. Um, when Jesus, when the, the guard helped him with um, like the spear in his, in his uh, basically his rib, why? Why did he let out blood and water to mix? Yeah, okay. Um, we're, we're kind of going off the subject, but I'll answer it quickly. When you, um, when, if, if, somebody is, if somebody is dead and you, you poke him, blood will not come out. Why? Because how, how is blood circulated in the, in the body? By the heart. The heart pumps the blood. Right? So if somebody is dead, you poke them, you poke them no, nothing come, no blood comes out. But instead, um, like, um, uh, like a, a white substance will come out, um, like a, so similar to water. So when the soldier pierced the side of Christ, both blood and water came out, which means what? Which means that he died, but he's also still alive. Okay? So this is why blood and water, and this, is, uh, this doesn't happen. This is impossible to happen, that blood and water both come out because either blood will come out, that means the person is, is alive, or water will come out, that means the person is not alive. But because Christ is both God and man at the same time, so as a man, he died, but as God, he was still alive. You understand? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, <clears throat> so after we finish the doxologies and after we, we recite the um, introduction to the creed and then the creed, then Abuna starts to pray the prayer of mercy or the litany of mercy, which we know as Ivnoti Nainan, right? Um, so he holds a cross in his hand and on the cross, there's going to be three candles, as you see in the picture there, okay? And 
he begins to pray the, uh, the prayer of the mercy. He holds the cross in his right hand, and then he lifts his, his left hand in prayer, like you see in the picture there, right? He's holding the cross in his right hand, and he's, he's praying. And then he's facing the east, okay? And he's, he prays, oh, God, have mercy upon us. Settle mercy upon us. Have compassion upon us. I want you to pay attention to this because I'm going to ask you about this. Okay, so when he's facing the east, he, he says three prayers. God, have mercy upon us. Settle mercy upon us. Have compassion upon us. And then he turns to the north. Okay, and then he prays, hear us. Then he turns to the west and he says, bless us. Then he turns to the south and he says, keep us. And then he turns back to the east and he says, what, help us. And then he continues while he's looking towards the east and he says, take away your anger from us, visit us with your salvation and forgive us our sins. How many prayers here we have? We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten prayers. Most of them are towards the east. Okay? So, again, he's looking towards the east. So he's looking towards the altar, and he says, Oh God, have mercy up. Oh God, have mercy upon us. Like that, right? Set to mercy upon us. Have compassion upon And then we say, Amen. Are you listening? So you don't get caught out again. Then he turns towards the north, and he says, What he. And then we say, Amen. Then he goes towards the west, and then he says, Bless us. And then he goes towards the south, and he says, Keep us. And then he goes towards the east again, and then he says, uh, Help us. Help us is missing here. Okay. And then we say, Amen. And then he finishes by saying, Take away your anger from us, visit us with your salvation, and forgive us our sins. Okay. So this is. The prayer of the, the, the mercy, the litany of the mercy. So now let's try to understand the right, why we pray it like that. We are praying for mercy, right? That God may have mercy upon us, that he may save us. How was salvation accomplished? Salvation was accomplished on the cross. That's why he's holding the cross when he's praying this prayer. And then he has three candles on the cross. The candles indicate that the one who saved us, who is Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. So that's why we hold candles. And he gave us light through his salvation. Why three candles? Why, why not five candles or seven candles or one candle? Because we are saying Trinity that... Is a symbol of the Trinity. Trinity. Yes, exactly. The, the, the salvation was accomplished through the whole Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's a symbol of the Trinity. So the Trinity saved us through Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, who gave us light. The prayer starts in the east and concludes in the east. The east is um, where we, you know, where we, uh, where we always pray, where we always look towards God. So we are requesting the mercy and forgiveness from God. And that's why we start in the east and we finish in the east. At the end, um, when, when Abuna fish, finishes the whole prayer, we say, Lord, have mercy three times, asking God to grant us his mercies. When Abuna looks to the left side in the north and he says, hear us, okay, why does he say hear us when he's looking towards the west, uh, sorry, towards the, the left? The left is always the place of rejection. The right is always the place of acceptance. So when we are praying towards the place of rejection, we are asking God and are asking God to have mercy upon us. So we're asking him to hear us, please hear us. Even though we are not worthy, even though we have been rejected because of our many sins, but we are crying to God and asking him to, um, to, to hear us. When he looks towards the right side, okay, 
on the right side is always a symbol of might and power. You know, your, your right hand, most people are right hand dominant. So you do everything with your right hand. So your right hand is usually more stronger than your left hand. So this is the place of power. This is the place of might. And so we pray and say, keep us, keep us by your might. And then when, when we pray towards the West, towards the congregation, he, uh, he prays and says, what well, bless us. So he's looking at us. He's looking at the congregation, the people, and he's asking God to bless us. Okay. So as I said, most of the prayers are towards the East. But these three directions, so if, if you have to remember which prayer is where, in the left, which is the north, this is the place of rejection. So we pray and say, hear us. In the right, which is the place of power, we say, keep us. And in the west, which is, he's looking at the people and he's saying, asking God to bless the people. Any questions about this? Okay. After Abuna finishes the litany of the mercy, then he begins the litany. The word litany means prayer, okay? So then he begins the litany of the gospel. So he takes the censer and he begins to pray the litany of the gospel. So deacons, pay attention. After Abuna finishes the litany of the mercy, when, when, he, when the deacons start to say, here he lies on three times, then you need to bring the censer and the incense box to the priest and you take the cross and the candles from him, okay? Of course, it's, it's helpful if there's a second deacon, so a second deacon can come, he can take the, 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 the cross and the, and, the, uh, and the candle while the other deacon is bringing the incense and the censer. Um, if not, if it's only one deacon, it's only one deacon. Okay, but just pay attention. At this time, you need to be ready. You need to bring the censer, the incense, and take the, uh, the, the cross and the candles, put them away, and also come back outside with the cross and the gospel to stand behind Abuna to pray the litany of the gospel. Okay, so in the litany of the gospel, <clears throat> we, we, we hear this prayer many times, right? But I want us to take a moment to think about it. So what does Abuna pray in the, in the prayer of the gospel? He says what? Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and for your ears, for they hear. So my question to you now, what is it that we see and hear that the prophets and the righteous men and even the angels themselves cannot see. We see Jesus. We see Jesus Christ himself, exactly. We see the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, where do we see the Lord Jesus Christ? We are praying the prayer of the? Gospel. Gospel. Do we see Jesus in the gospel? Yeah, he's our teacher. Yes, exactly. Yes. So we see Christ in the gospel. And so the, the Abuna is saying many prophets who, were, who came before Christ wished that they can see Christ, but they couldn't. And wished that they can hear him, but they couldn't. And so all those prophets, they died, you know, um, on the hope of the salvation, but they did not actually see it. But we see the salvation every day. We also, what else do we see in the church that those people couldn't see? The saints. Uh, do we see the saints? But more important than the saints. We see the Urbana. And see what's the, the Urbana? What does the it become? Sacrifice. The body of God. Exactly. And in the wine becomes the blood of God. Exactly. Exactly. So we see the sacrifice. We see the Lord Jesus Christ on the altar. We eat him. We hold him. We put him in, in our body. And all of these prophets, they, you know, they, 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 they looked or they saw glimpses of it in their prophecies. They wrote about it like Isaiah, like Daniel but they never actually saw it, but we see it every day. You know, in the, yes. in the, in the hymn of uh, P. Oik that, that we chant after Psalm 150 in the, in the distribution, we say what? 
around you stand the cherubim and the seraphim, and they cannot look at you. Can you imagine in heaven, the cherubim and the seraphim, they're standing around the Lord, but they cannot look at him. They have to cover their faces. That's why we say they have six wings, and with two, they cover their faces because they cannot look directly at him. But the, the, the next verse in the hymn says, we behold you upon the altar. We see you on the altar and we partake of your body and your precious blood. So we have an honor that is even greater than that of the angels and the cherubim and the seraphim, because we can see the Lord and we eat him and we take him. Um, the, this is the response that the deacon says um, uh, during the uh, litany of the gospel. Um, this is Greek, and I know many deacons sometimes they don't pronounce it very, uh, uh, very accurately, so I just wanted to uh, pronounce it for you. Pros vexasti epertu agio evangelio. Pros vexasti means pray. Agio, like we say agios, agios means holy. Evangelio, angelio, angelion is what the gospel or l'ingil. That's where the, the Arabic word comes from. So pray for the Holy Gospel. At the end of the litany, so again, deacons pay attention because I'm sure most deacons do not know this or, or do not pay attention to this. Before, like Abuna finishes the litany, a few seconds before he finishes the litany, the deacon needs to go inside and stand and wait for Abuna. Okay, um, so he enters and waits for Abuna, and then they both go around the altar holding the gospel. Again, if we can imagine that this is the gospel, okay. So um, I, you're, the deacon puts the the, um, the cross on top of the gospel like this, okay. And he goes around holding the gospel with both hands from his side. And then Abuna is holding the gospel also from the other side with, with his hands or both his hands. So there are four hands holding the gospel. And then we go around the altar in this procession. During this procession, the priest is going to be praying the prayer of uh, Simeon, the priest. Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. We know this prayer because we prayed in the Agbeya. In which hour? Who knows? Nine. Uh, nine. Nine. Complying. No. Complying. The, the, the twelfth hour the, mm -hmm. before we go to sleep. Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. So, again, because deacons need to pay attention. You go inside. So you're, you're, you're standing behind the Buna first, holding the gospel and the, um, the cross like this. You're going to go inside. You're going to turn the gospel and the cross like this. The cross is pointing towards you. And you're going to wait for Abuna. He's going to hold the gospel from the other side. And you're going to walk backwards, like you see in the picture there, um, around the altar while holding the gospel. Don't let go of the gospel and just walk away. No. This is the right. You are holding the gospel with Abuna going around the altar. What does all of this mean? Who is Simeon the elder? So we're saying we're praying the, 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 the prayer of Simeon the elder. So who's Simeon the elder? Simeon I, is mm. he's the person who held, like, who held Jesus when he... Um, uh, when he was like uh, 40 days old, I think, and he said the 12th hour gospel, like. Okay, so, like, yeah. He was, he was the one that was translating the Bible. And yes. then uh, it was told, no, you're going you're gonna to live until you see a version that had a baby. baby exactly. Jesus. So at, at one point, they wanted to translate the Old Testament from Hebrew to Greek. So they gathered 70 elders, 70 scholars, and they asked them, they put each two in a, in a, in a room or a chamber, and they asked them to translate the, the Old Testament from Hebrew to Greek. And Simeon was one of those scholars. 
So he was translating the, the prophecy of Isaiah the prophet. In Isaiah, there's a prophecy that says what? Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. So he came to translate that from Hebrew to Greek. And then he started to think about it. And, and he couldn't comprehend, he couldn't understand how could a virgin give a son? Because those two words don't go together. If she's a virgin, that means she didn't give any birth. So how can she be a virgin and, and still give uh, birth to a son? So he wanted to change the verse from behold a virgin to something like behold a young lady. So he leaves it like open like that um, because he, he figured this doesn't make sense. People will, will, will make fun of me. They will say, I don't know how to translate. I don't know how to write things, right? So, and, and it doesn't make any sense also that a virgin gives birth. So he's gonna change it to something like behold a young lady. When he was thinking of doing that, then he heard a voice telling him to translate it exactly as is. Behold, a virgin shall uh, bear a son. And that he will not die until he sees this prophecy fulfilled. So he translated it correctly. And then he lived 300 years until this uh, happened, until the Lord Christ was born a Virgin Mary. So when he was you know, 300 years old, you can imagine how old he was. He couldn't even see at that, at that point, he was uh, blind. Um, when they brought in the child Jesus into the temple, so the Holy Spirit spoke to him or, or, or uh, um, gave him a sign that he needs to go into the temple so that he can see the prophecy that he's been waiting for being, be, being fulfilled. And so when he got there and when he held the child Jesus in his arms, his eyes were open and he saw Christ. And that's why he said what, um, behold, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. So this is the first time after a long time that he was able to see um, because he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. You are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. He wanted to die. You know, he was very old at that point. And he's been waiting for a long time. So he said, Lord, according to the promise that you gave me, now you can allow me to rest and die because now I have seen the fulfillment of uh, the prophecy. Um, so basically he's 300 years old. Yeah, actually, he was probably older than that because he did not start translating, you know, when he was one year old. Um, so probably, you know, if we say he was, a, he was a youth, for example, when he was translating, so maybe he lived to be 300 and, you know, 20, 330, something like that. Okay. So the rite that we just talked about with Abuna holding the gospel and going around the altar with the deacon, um, this symbolizes what happened there when Simeon the elder carried the, the child Jesus into the temple. Jesus is the word of God, right? And the gospel is the word of God. The procession around the altar symbolizes the spread of the word of God around the world, just like um, we take this gospel and go around the altar. So we are saying that, you know, this is like um, the, the spread of the gospel all over the world. The prayer of Simeon that's recited by the priest during this procession symbolizes the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. Because Simeon was living since the Old Testament and he was waiting until he sees the prophecy fulfilled of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the beginning of the New Testament. So this procession is, is like the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament with um, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, After this procession, then the, the deacon will take the, 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 the cross and he will go and stand and he will say the response um, uh, to stand up with the fear of God. But on the other side, so on, on the north side, the priest will be standing 
holding the gospel, facing the West and raising the gospel above his head as a sign of veneration. And then on the other side, on the South side, the deacon is standing, raising the cross and saying what Stasiti, again, this is another response that some deacons don't say it accurately. Stasi, and this is also Greek. Stasite metavovo theo akosome akosomen to agio evangelio. Again, stasite means to stand up. Metavovo theo theo is God. Vovo is fear. So stasite metavovo theo stand with the fear of God. Akosomen somen is to listen. So akosomen, let us listen to agio evangelio. Again, agio is uh, holy. Evangelio is the gospel. So stand with the fear of God. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Any questions about the, the um, litany of the mercy, if not in Ainan, or the litany of the gospel? Okay, good. So now we can pray, we can play our game. So for the game today, raise your hand if you want to play. We're gonna we're gonna play um, Jeopardy, okay? So we have ten questions, okay, and they all deal with the the litany of the mercy of Noti Nainan. And basically, you're gonna see a phrase, and you need to tell me which direction Abuna says this phrase. Is it in the east, west, north, or south? Okay. Um, what about the back to ten? What about the what? The ones behind the picture. Yeah, we, uh, it's only those 10. So there's, there's no questions behind the picture. Oh, okay. Okay. Obviously, the ones, you know, with uh, smaller numbers are a little bit easier. The ones with bigger numbers are a little bit more difficult. So um, when I call upon you, tell me which question, whether orange or blue, um, and which, um, you know, how many points you want to try for. And then we'll, you'll see the question and you try to answer it. So Noah, you have your hand raised. Which question do you want? Um, blue 300. Blue 300, look at that. He's going for medium already. Okay, visit us with your salvation. Which direction does Abuna face when he says visit us with your salvation? East. East, good, all right. That was easy, yeah. All right, who's next? Jonathan? Yeah, um, directions 500. 500, all right. Bless us. Which direction? Um, that would be east. So remember what I said? West. west. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Who's, who, who said west? That's correct. Because he's, he's looking at the people <laughs> and he's saying what bless us. That, so that's the West. Good job. All right. Uh, Tom? Um, orange 500. Orange 500. Settle mercy upon us. Um, east. West. 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 Which one? I heard East and West. At the same time. East. Hmm? East. Good job. All right. Uh, Mina? Um, let's do um let's do let's do with for four hundred. Okay. Take away your anger from us. Um, uh, east, actually. East, good job, Mina. East, good. All right. Uh, Nadia? 500. Uh, the orange, whatever that is. 500, we already did that one. So you need to pick one that's black. I'm sorry. Th uh, 300. Okay. What? Help us. Uh, I think it's east. Um, it is east. east. Good yeah. job. <laughs> okay. Um, Fenuel, did I pronounce that correctly? 
Which for 100? All right. Hear us. North. No. North. That's right, north. Remember, north is the is the left, which means it's far or rejected, and so that's why we we pray to God and ask us ask Him to hear us. Good job, Anthony. Uh four hundred dark blue. Okay, keep us west. So west is towards the people. Oh, uh, I know this is yours. I don't think that I <laughs> north, south, north is um. We said Here's. north is. Hear us. Yeah, it's west. Huh? It's it's south. Yeah, this is not right. <laughs> south. Uh, it should be it should be south. Yeah, this is right. incorrect. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see who hasn't said yet. Uh, Gabby, I think you had your hand up at one point. Uh, which 200? Okay. Have compassion upon us. East. East. Good job. That's an easy one. All right. There's two more left. Let's see who hasn't, uh, who hasn't said anything yet. Elora? Elora, okay. Uh, Gabby Gerges. Uh, one hundred. Okay. Oh God, have mercy upon us. This is the easiest one. <laughs> uh, east. East, very good. All right, and the last one. Let's see who hasn't said anything. Uh, Noah is uh, is Christopher there? Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Okay. Um, Helena, did you do one? No. Okay. Do the last one, Helena. Forgive us our sins. Very easy, also. East. Sense. East, very good, very good. Good job, guys, very good. All right, um, <clears throat> thank you for attending today. Um, we'll see you next uh, Tuesday at the same time. We'll now pray and end the session. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the and the power glory. And the glory forever. Forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you.